131, I had a question coming out of section 6.4, number 61, and here we were asked to find the domain of this function, and keep in mind with every domain, or every function, there's always three domain issues that we're looking at in math, right? Or let me write issues. And we've talked about these before. We have to deal with fractions, we have to deal with radicals, and we have to deal with logarithms. And for this particular problem, I had two of those light up. I have a fraction and I have a logarithm. I don't have a radical, so that's, that's nice. But in terms of the fraction, I have to worry about where the denominator is 0. So for the fraction aspect, if I set x minus 4 to 0, I'm going to get x equaling 4. So I have to remember to kick out x equaling 4 from my domain. So if we kind of keep track of how we're going, I would have started my domain, and I'll, I'll just put this here. I would have started my domain with all real numbers, but now because of the fraction, I have to get rid of x equaling 4. So I'm at negative infinity to 4 and then 4 to infinity. But I'm not done because I still need to figure out this logarithm. So with a logarithm, what needs to happen is that this entire argument here has to be positive. So I need the fraction x plus 2 over x minus 4. I quite literally need x plus 2 over x minus 4 to be positive, to be greater than 0. And for that, we're going to send up, set up something called a sign pattern. And it's just a, a, a little x-axis here. And when I say x-axis here, I mean quite literally. There's the number line. All right, And it's just a graphic organizer to help me keep track of when things go positive versus negative. So what I did here was I said, well, I have a problem. If I look at this fraction at 4, the y, the, I can't get a, a, a y value, right? If I try to plug 4 into that function, that, that denominator zeroes out. So that fraction in and of itself, that argument does not exist. The other important value that I took a look at was negative 2. And that came from my numerator being 0. So really, in a sense, I set my numerator to 0 and I set my denominator to 0. And if you want to see the math behind that, I set x plus 2 to 0 to get x equaling negative 2, and I set x plus 4, oops, jk, it was x minus 4. I set x minus 4 to 0 to get x equaling 4. All right, so those are where my two x values are showing up here on this number line. And so I have x values down below the number line, and I have the, the argument values of x minus 2 in ratio to, excuse me, x plus 2 in ratio to x minus 4 on the numerator, or at least on the top part, I should say, of my sign pattern. Okay, so this is how sign patterns work. Once you get this set away, like once you figure out where things are zero, you pick test points, right? So again, imagine this is the number line. There's a negative infinity here. There's a positive infinity here. So pick a test point. So pick something like 5. And I would pick 5 because I just need to pick a number that's larger than 4. And I like to go with whole numbers. And I'm going to go just to the right of that. So now what you do is you take this, this value of 5 and plug it into x plus 2 over x minus 4. And just keep track of whether or not you get a positive result or a negative result. So imagine if I had x plus 2 in ratio to x minus 4 and I plugged in a 5, I'd have a 5 plus 2 on the numerator and a 5 minus 4 in the denominator. That would be a positive number over a positive number. So really I'm going to get a positive number. And that's why I have that plus sign there. Which means that any number I plug in to the right of 4, if I plug in 6, 7, 100, if I plug in, I don't know, 90.5, it doesn't matter. When I plug it into this expression, it's positive. So my argument is positive when x is greater than 4. Okay, so I'll keep track of that. All right, so we know when I plugged in 5, I got a positive number. Now plug in an x value between negative 2 and 4. And I typically, when I can, I plug in 0. So I'm going to plug in 0 to my, my fraction here, my, my rational argument. And let's see what we get. So if I plug 0 in, oops, excuse me, I would have 0 plus 2 on the numerator and 0 minus 4 on the denominator. So this time I would have a positive, but the denominator is going to be negative. I should say I would have a positive on the numerator, but the denominator is going to be negative, which means ultimately my ratio here will be negative. And that's why I have this negative symbol here. So what that's telling me is if I plug in any x value, between negative 2 and 4, I'm going to get a negative number for my argument. All right, so we've got two of our signs. Let me clear this stuff out. All right, so the last thing I want to check for now is I want to pick something to the left of negative 2. So I'll pick something like negative 3. And again, we're going to plug it into our fraction. 
So if I plug in negative 3, I'm going to get negative 3 plus 2, negative 3 minus 4. So if I start to look at that ratio, just in terms of signs, I have a negative in ratio to a negative, which is ultimately positive, and that's why you see me putting that plus sign there. So if I back out of this, what this is ultimately saying, all right, is if I think about my number line, if I think about it from negative infinity to positive infinity, my, my fraction, which is my argument, my argument is positive in this area, and it's positive in this area. All right, and if I want to shade in that number line, this is where my argument is positive. And why I'm worried about where it's positive is because when I have a logarithm, I can only have a logarithm where the argument is positive. And these are the intervals where that argument is positive. And if I want to write those intervals up, you see I'm starting at negative infinity, and I go to negative 2. And then I also have the interval from 4 to infinity. That was the area that I shaded on this number line, and that's why that is the domain of my function. So I had to throw out 4 because I had a fraction, and I couldn't have the denominator be 0. But like I said, when we're building off of this, that was my initial... I booted 4 from all real numbers down to negative infinity to 4, 4 to infinity, but then I have to boot some more. I actually can only go from negative infinity to negative 2 and then 4 to infinity. We had to rule out even more of this number line because that argument was negative in between x being negative 2 and positive 4. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.